uh, has never actually been banned away from Team Freedom, and Team Liquid respect enough to say, we can't let you have that power pick. You can have your D.Va, but that's not going to be enough. All right, game three, as we go to Cursed Hollow, Team Liquid and Team Freedom. A 1-1 currently here in the elimination match for the Western Clash. Whoa, I was completely wrong. We see the first ban coming out from Team Freedom onto the Oriole. I, you know, I still like it a bit, but they have to have some sort of plan to address to the Vikings, because on this same map, they did fall victim to Nomia's Vikings and struggled against it. That's the one map they did drop, so they end up prioritizing the Uther. I do like that. But think about that case. While they did lose to Nomia, again, there were moments where we thought that Team Freedom had the game won after a couple of good moves. They just didn't finish uh. the game well. Maybe <laughs> they think here that they can make the adjustments to handle the Vikings, and they're going to have to, as Team Liquid first takes the Vikings and moves into Tassadar afterwards. Tassadar's an interesting pick here with the Vikings. To me, it kind of says, look, we want to siege. We want to get a hyper carry. Yeah. Even though Oriel is off the table, uh. we want that high sustain. To me, there's the potential that this is a tankless composition. Oh, but the, the Illidan's already been banned, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Illidan so being it's banned been here. Difficult. Team Liquid already doing the research, realizing, okay, if they do leave with the Vikings, we'll get rid of the Illidan, because yeah, that yeah. was a big factor that changed then. Team Freedom still has Dahaka available. Would love to see them move in that Dahaka. Very helpful against the Vikings. You want to have a Vikings Hunter. Um, there is other options that we haven't seen in a long time, and I'm actually surprised we haven't seen yet. Zeratul. Uh, would be a great pickup, wonderful for helping out with that VP, but also to hunt down those Vikings. Genji is an option, yeah. very strong against Vikings as well. And Stitches is up for Zogrug. Like, right. when I see Team Freedom, I think their bread and butter is Stitches Uther. But at the same time, the Dahaka Greymane makes perfect sense. Yeah. There's always the chance that Greymane might not opt into Cocktail Build this game, go a Wizened Duelist in particular, split push against the Vikings, get stacked up, yep. and be able to just PvE like a maniac. The, at the rate, if he's able to get stacked up to do objectives like the boss, is just maniacal. We, we saw the potential for the Wizened Duelist once before, but if I remember correctly, it actually got no value. What? Didn't actually reach that stage of the game. I'm trying to remember. It was when Tempo Storm played against Team Liquid on Cursed Hollow, and Psalm did opt in to go with yeah. his duelist. But the way they ended up playing the map was not so much a macro trading oriented playstyle. They ended up team fighting a lot, given they decided to go for the Wizen duelist. Yeah. Now I'd like to see Team Freedom not make that same decision that Tempo made in that game, but I definitely think Grayman, if he opts in to go for that build, can definitely get good value. Now, Liquid's opting in to ban the Genji. I think that's smart. Yep. Kira already showed his prowess game one on that hero. He's just so good. I mean, those two heroes, both Genji and Greymo, essentially, I mean, on top of Dahaka as well, would essentially nullify TLV. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Now, the choice comes from Team Freedom. Which hyper carry do they get rid of? And they instantly lock out the Cassia. They remove her from the uh, availability of Team Liquid. I was thinking maybe the Vol could be a possibility, but they decided to go for the Cassie instead. I like the Cassie Ben more, given that they've already opted into picking the Greymane. Sure. Especially on a map where Cocktail Build is weaker, I feel like Cassia just hard counters the Greymane. They end up, however, because of the Cassie Ben, getting the Anubarak on the second half of the draft. I'm sure Liquid is very happy with that fact. As well as the Rhaegar. They sort of are set up in a position where they can have a hyper carry for Dark Mock. Yep. And I'm really curious to see what they opt in for. It is the potential for a Lunara even there to kind of Lunara, round out that composition. Lunara, Bala, Tracer, they get to see what Team Freedom's card is first and then make that decision. Yeah. yeah, a lot of flexibility for Team Liquid, so it's smart drafting by them. But really, the ball's in the court for Team Freedom now. How do they flesh this one out? What do they look for? What is the strategy? Ooh. Stitches is the play, and Medivh, the Prophet has spoken again. I was going to say, I really do like Stitches here, Team Liquid doesn't have the damage to necessarily deal with the heavy front line that Stitches can provide. Stitches also... Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, Let's oh, stop the press. What's happening here? Wow. Uh, okay, give me a second to collect my thoughts. Uh, Sergeant Hammer's an interesting pick. Definitely after too? seeing the Stitches yeah. and Medivh. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to give input on Whoa. this pick. Wait, guys, wait, guys, let me check with production. No, it's not a uh, mistake <laughs> there for that one. So, uh, <laughs> it's it's not like an Alarak first pick, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, I, I feel like Medivh and Stitches and Dahaka have such good matchups into the Sergeant Hammer. The one thing that you got to keep in mind, though, due to the Viking soap, you're going to have a four man siege lane with that Sergeant Hammer. Yeah, yeah. And that's very, very dangerous. And you don't have to siege up right away, too. You can dance around, play around the hook. She brings in a great 
damage, especially after level four when you get that focused attack. Mm. There is some options here for Star Sergeant Hammer. It's just that why would you pick a character that's considered immobile when you could pick something else up that right. would allow you to be mobile? I figured it out, guys. You create an impenetrable barrier with the Vikings around the Sergeant <laughs> yeah. Hammer oh, so yeah. that the hook goes out. <laughs> you just catch an Eric. Another hook goes out. You've already killed Eric. You get a Baylog. Yeah. <laughs> we'll but then Greymane's getting all the Wizen Duelist stacks. Let's oh, yeah, be honest. That's, fine. that's so much value. And then he just drops a Medivh <laughs> portal on top of the Medivh and or on top of the Sergeant Hammer, and Greymane's just chunking for like 500 damage in <laughs> auto attack. Uh, I believe we need to go to the casters, guys, for game number three here. So thank you very much, boys. As we head over to the commentary team now, Sergeant Hammer coming out in this Team Liquid Vikings composition. Ah, thank you, Kalaris. And yeah, this is going to be a good game. And at the same time, Silly Glorang, thinking that Grayman is going to get full of Wizen Duelist stacks. I mean, this is Europe and not North America that you're playing against here. <laughs> you're so this is not Roll20. So you're saying the Hasu Ops has the ability to play Vikings and never die to the Grayman. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I still don't believe that he gets the full stacks, but Hasovs has been proven to be a great Vikings player. I would not put him to a level where I say that he's not going to lose a single one of them. And with the Sarge Hammer coming out, I mean, talk about a bold statement into yeah. that Medivh Stitches. Now, the thing about Hammer is I have actually seen Liquid play Hammer, but it was so far against other comps. And against this one, against the, the Stitches and also the Dehaka here, as you said, it's a bold statement, and I want to see if they can back it up to the left side. Map number three, Team Liquid with Norok on the Sergeant, Hazobs on the Vikings, Splendor on Rhaegar, Dartmog on Tassadar, and Blumby on an Uberok. And here they are, Team Freedom, trying to deal with the unique style that Liquid has there with the Vikings. We're having Collusion on Uther, Stitch is played by Zugrug, Cure will be on Dahaka, Dainsky's got the Medivh, and Nazmus on Greymane. Tricks that talked about it. In Europe, when you play against Team Liquid, the first band that you think about is TLV. And Freedom has to know this. They played against Liquid. They scrimmed against them several times during their boot camp. This is something that they have encountered. Not so sure about the uh, Sergeant Hammer, but well, the question about the Vikings has already been answered. As of scouting with Eric, and he gets immediately annihilated. But keep in mind, while well, Freedom is pushing the top lane, there's a little Sergeant Hammer down at the bottom of the map doing work. Yeah, and now it's just all about the race here. How much can Sergeant Hammer make happen? One of the best siege heroes in the game, other than possibly Sylvanas for very different reasons. Yep. Uh, but in fact, uh, it's just absolutely amazing is staying out of that max range, and already we see Liquid pulling ahead to no surprise. Yeah, I don't know what Freedom is currently doing up at the top. I like the kill here, but Hazops is back already with Eric. All that he has to do is soak some experience. And what are you going to do, Freedom, when Liquid takes your fort and moves towards the keep? I think the idea is go even on the keeps because those are realistic and the distance between the fort to the keep is going to be slow enough that How maybe is that Freedom... Realistic? I'm I'm not saying it's realistic. I'm just throwing out ideas here. Okay. You know, I think if they maybe had been a little bit faster, you know, not backing yeah. out due to the threat of the Vikings and concentrating on those kills, it might be a bit closer. But we'll find out. The fort's about to fall, and the key pressure is already going to be real here for Freedom. Or, excuse me, Liquid. So there is some extra pressure in the mid lane, so that is a winner. But right now, the keep is under attack, and already up to the top, there's still vision. So a part of this wall is definitely going to fall, and the only thing that Liquid basically has to do is to either keep vision of the heroes up at the top lane, or anchor Hammer. Nurok is already putting mines to the left side because he wants to make sure that there's no surprise flank happening. So the members of Freedom responding here on bottom. Portal's going to drop. Nerox going to be fine there with those thrusters. Collusion, though, realizes uh, there's a lot of scary members there of Liquid. Going to go back to the comfortable side there. I have to, by the way, say that the crowd that we're having here is absolutely amazing. Kiev is insane. The crowd that has been watching this weekend so far, these guys are getting hyped for every single pick. Every play that they see, they are pumped. Those are true heroes of the Storm fans, and it's an absolute pleasure to cast Yeah, them. you know, they're even seeing them NA. When they get a little wild, they're like, yeah, let's go. They just want good games, yeah. as most of us North American and European fans do. They want heroes of the Storm, and they are getting it right now. They get Hammer, they get the Vikings, and what more do you want? Medivh even on the other side, and now we're coming into those fights. Hazorp still soaking, but the first objective is there. Hook hits home, Blumby on the way back, but the portal in the back line, still a big threat here. Nirok got a little bit of pressure. Hasuops actually gets the entire tribute oh. channel <laughs> with that lost Vikings, <laughs> and no kills obtained here for T or Team Freedom. Wow, that Eric, sneaky as ever, he moves just, in and channels it through. He just 
baby hustled up in there. He's just like, I got this. Not backing out the entire time. Freedom completely, like, <laughs> their bodies collapsed around. I don't even think I saw him finish capturing it. That's how close they were. But nobody able to get a damage output. He's too small. They couldn't hit him. I mean, his hitbox. Blizzard, please. <laughs> Blizzard, please. Fix. Single-handedly nerfing North America. Let's yeah. Eric just too imbalanced. <laughs> All right. So far, Freedom, at least in experience, holds up. So that's already a big of a win. But the one thing I have to say about the Vikings, if you're not really familiar with European Vikings play, yes, the early game, you can get a lead, but Nurok, and especially Hazops, of course, as the Vikings player, is the most dangerous in the late game. What he can really do with controlling the map and getting the experience, pushing lanes out is crazy. Baylock falling, so Freedom still keeping the pressure on, but we are talking tribute number two right now, and Nurok is trying to get it. Here comes the portal and the hook, but Nurok dodges both. Dainsky with a very good delay very early on, going back and forth, trying to make it happen. Kira, meanwhile, is keeping pressure there with the Dahaka towards the top lane. Eric able to use that bribe to make sure he gets that. Nice delay there coming out from Nurok. Klusion's going to start the channel once more. Impales drop. Darkmok rather low in HP. Klusion finds himself a tribute. Dainsky going back in the portal, and that is now Freedom tying it up there in tributes. Yeah, and Nurok, of course, benefiting greatly from the Tassa level 4 talent from the Kalas Embrace. That extra... Ex life points that he gets back here through his high auto attack damage is crazy. And for the build that we're seeing on Nurok, we have advanced artillery taken on level 1, the focus attack on level 4, so a lot of damage coming out of him, and the hyper cooling engine then later on on 7 to make sure that you can move out of these fights. We've been talking about especially the Haka, and also Stitches putting the pressure on him, and these are all tools that can allow him then to move out of these fights a lot more often. Sergeant Hammer is going to post up here towards the keep that Liquid has con been concentrating on since the beginning of the game. Three members of Freedom aren't back, but only Dainsky and Zugrug have displayed themselves here. Camp at the top lane, bribed earlier by the Vikings, is starting to get some value. Tribute is on the map, so Freedom finds himself in an awkward spot. And at the same time, we have the lead in experience for Team Liquid already. So with this Tribute up, doesn't look like the members of Team Liquid have any interest in it. They have all concentrated here towards that bottom boss, and they intend to be able to use Dainsky. this with that keep. Dainsky's there, but there's no ley line, so it's not like this is a Medivh threatening to take this yeah, boss. They don't have 10 here, but I like that he's immediately on the scout, and Freedom starts to move in here. I love this. Dainsky immediately with a read. He's saying, like, wait a second. They're not oh. going for the tribute. Let's see what we can do here. And they even want to take over. This is brilliant because typically Liquid actually struggles pre-10 teamfighting. They've been winning through macro play, and as long as they don't close in on the heroics, they might win the fight. Kira coming in with the brush shot. Blumby staying on top of the boss. It's down, but the fight is on. The fight is on. Eric from the back line putting the pressure on Dainsky. Blumby is still on the spot here, but so is Stitches. Gets the hook against Splendor. Nearly going down, but Stitches low, and so is Riga. All of them. Falling and dying, Eric is down, Liquid loses hero after hero, but so does their opponent. The boss goes to freedom as we see three heroes die on each side. Mission accomplished here for Team Freedom. Over and over again have Liquid been able to abuse the Vikings in all inning there. On to the boss to get early keeps, the but they ten. stall for now. The 10 is there. They won Killusion, and they are going to get him. Utha is down. Liquid a level ahead and up to the top lane. The Siege Shines are still getting value. But i I got to be honest. That was such a huge trade for Freedom. Yep. Not giving up that boss because this is what Liquid has done. They just isolate a lane. They dominate it until it gets to a point they can win through it on the secondary boss cycle. Now, just to highlight that again, why the boss is so important, the fort on the bot lane and the wall at the keep is already gone. For Freedom, that boss didn't do it too much, but if Liquid gets control of it with a Sergeant Hammer to push in, they can aim for a keep only seven minutes into the game. So for Freedom, as you said, it was crucial to make that play. And really, the first team, it feels like in a long while, especially at least from the North American team, that seem to be trying to stop Liquid from doing what the master game plan has been from beginning to end here with the Lost Vikings. But by no means is this Freedom suddenly redeeming control. Liquid has yep. done a very fine job, and we know what late game Hasuov's Vikings can make happen. But Freedom with a good place here. Hazops up at the top, but with everybody going for boss, Liquid is simply going for core. It's hammer time once again as Nurok sieges up, and they will get the boss at the top lane. But in the meantime, Liquid is going to take control of that bot lane by eliminating Team Freedom's keep only seven, eight minutes into this game. Flawless rotation coming out from Team Liquid there, understanding the circumstances, and that was absolutely a worth trade for them. They have got to be feeling so very good with that 
and now <laughs> a tribute's up. This is curse point for both teams. The boss is up through top, though. Kira there on the Dahaka is going to be keeping pressure. It looks like nobody on Liquid, other than a couple of Vikings, seem to be giving it any form of response. The Vikings actually even trying to un to dismount a few of the heroes to slow them down as they rotate Fresh over. Up. This is a curse tribute at this point. Vikings still there. Gorge comes in though, and immediately the kidnap combo with Medivh providing the portal. They're moving out. Leyline has been used. As we see Anubra going in, Tassada is down. And on the side, Kyr has been delaying the entire time, even with just the isolation. Olaf receives the hammer of justice. And now this is going to be North America claiming themselves a curse. But wait, they want to wait and maximize the time here. They're going to try and transition all the way up to boss using collusion to make sure they get the capture. Baylog also falling. There Brilliant. we have it. All right, so they get the curse, starting to move in. Still, the bot lane is pushing out, but we see Freedom going straight in, tr moving to the top lane, trying to keep on their own. And this is awesome. This is exactly the play they need to make here. This is great play on the side of Team Freedom. They want to kill it. They get an Uberak here. Ancestor barely coming out. Cure falling pretty low, though. Nice. Medivh's shield is going to keep him alive. Portal might be necessary. The Kun Kun is there, so no shielding. Coming out from Dainsky, the portal drop. And even though there's a curse, it looks like Freedom might not get the keep. Nazmus all ins there, and it still stands. The Haka is down. The keep is not. The keep is still in play. They haven't taken it down. Utha. Eliminated. This is a nightmare for freedom. The call was strong, saying we go in, we take the keep, we move out. But Liquid, with a talent advantage, even without the full force of the Vikings, get the kill against the Haka. Freedom thinks they have the keep, move out, but they still kill it, thanks to Medivh. Now the big question. Got it. Yeah, all right. Gets away. Very good placement there with the portal from Dainsky to ensure that he's able to pick it up. Uh, I was really afraid for them when yeah. they didn't get that. I mean, that's their... That is just It's their a lifesaver, really. You know, it's the only thing keeping them back into this game here against Team Liquid. The bosses, though, because they have been picked up relatively soon, it's 2.30 and 50 seconds, though, for Team Liquid's there onto the bottom half of the map. Liquid will, without a doubt, have a 16 talent tier over Freedom, and that is something you can expect them to try and abuse to, again, have a boss into a keepless lane. Yeah, and Hammer with a BFG on level 10. We haven't really pointed it out yet, but that's, of course, another highlight here. Uh, it's, it's my personal favorite. You know, the more and more that Sergeant Hammer's come into the meta, uh, originally it was only Napalm, and then we've yeah. seen a few buffs a uh, long time ago onto the BFG, and now all over the world it's a 50-50. I love it. I think it makes up for the lack of burst uh, so frequently that, you know, Sergeant Hammer seems to struggle with. Napalm, the argument was she can siege better, but really she's the best sieging hero in the game currently. And let's talk about damage output really quickly. We have nearly 30,000 hero damage already on Sergeant Hammer, and that far exceeds any other hero in the game. The second highest is actually Dehaka on the other side. So okay. Pure is currently delivering uh, siege dam uh, hero, hero damage, but it's only 18,000. So that's 10,000 more, a third more that we have for Sergeant Hammer. Cocoon is a great boss control tool, but the Leyline Seal and the Gorge are the things that I think Freedom is relying on here. But the question is, can they take down the boss before the team fight even unfolds with that 16 talent tier on the side of Team Liquid? Drag goes on to Blumby. Blumby already there. Hazops moves they in. They have to uses his old deck. Going in immediately. He gets Gorge it. is used to get the boss. Medivh is down though. He's dead and he's not the only one. Uther falls shortly after. And now they're going for Stitches. He wants playtime, but the only thing he gets is death. Nazmus is going to be going down here too. Cure is on the full retreat. Liquid is just bodying the members of Team Freedom. And though Freedom was able to find the boss, it may not matter as Liquid is stomping their way across to Curse Hollow to get this pressure onto the core. Nurok shows mercy and doesn't take the Haka down because the call is made. Boys, we end the game and we end it now. 16 versus 15. Ley lines up. They have the hammer. They're starting to move in. The ley line is up and we see Freedom coming back. Liquid takes a huge risk here. The ley line is out already. And Q is still there. They're trying to dive him, but it misses by a fraction. He's protected by me. Medivh moves out once again. He lives. Freedom lives. keeps everybody alive and the core hasn't even been scratched. And there's three catapults on top, a boss on bottom, a tribute up towards top, and we find Team Freedom nine seconds away from their boss spawning. They're not only going to be able to get the tribute and... The Haka is down. Oh. The Haka has fallen on the right side of the map. The catapults are still pushing the in, turn. but another engage. Cocoon is there. The turn might end the game here. Yeah, the catapults at the top lane are going to be a huge problem for Liquid, but right now they're looking to win the game. They go for an isolation against Stitches. They're trying to get it. They're getting the stun in. One, maybe two. The curse has hit in the meantime. Divine Storm Threat. 
Gorge and Isolation are the only things available, and no Dahaka yet. Hammer wailing away, the hook drawing it in. No follow-up CC though, Uther's not there. The curse has relieved the pressure. The catapults have been deep pushed and Liquid has all the time in the world to go for the core. The shields Nurok. have finally been eliminated. Already Hazlob's going for his ult once again. They're going for Zubrug. The they're Ancestral! Trying to get they're not getting it. The Ancestral comes through. Nurok but they can't do it. He dies. Nurok goes down. 78% the of the hook. Core. The hook comes in. He's a Rega. dog. The dog is down. It's a triple kill. Even with the curse, Liquid doesn't get the win against the core, and now all of a sudden, the momentum shifts in favor of Freedom as they drop Tassada. What's happening here? The most important thing here for Freedom is to not do what they just experienced Liquid doing. The biggest thing is they aren't even going to have a curse for themselves. Core, by no means, is going to be a realistic option. So what do they do? They're going they for it. They have 20 seconds for Hammer. Oh they they use support, they're going for it. They're trying to go for the core. Can they do this? They Greymane's better at sieging the most. Greymane is awesome here. Maybe they can. Dread, I think they can. It's Cocoon? 10 seconds for Hammer. If they hurry here, 10 seconds for Hammer, 12 for the Vikings. There's oh. two Vikings alive. They're going for it. They're making the play. They're trying to go for the core. They're dropping the hit points one after another. Collusion is BFT. already low. Doesn't matter. Look at Nazmas. The wolf is going in. He's going deep. They're getting the kills. Dread, Freedom does it. Freedom. They are taking down Team Liquid, or do they? The, the heroes Cocoon. Fall. The Cocoon Eight, is in. Eight, six, six, four, one, they did zero. It. Freedom takes down Team Liquid in the third game. Hazorp's Vikings have been defeated on Cursed Hollow. North Liquid gets too greedy and tries to end the game, and then Medivh Stitches, they all are able to shut them down and turn the game around. Freedom has taken the second game. <laughs> we find ourselves 